the Martian wind howled outside our habitation module. As I stared down the brief message on my console, cave system discovered potential signs of past life. I looked over at my fellow crew members, Dr. Naomi Jensen, an astrobiologist, and Lieutenant Colonel Edward Eddie Robinson, our pilot. We all knew the protocol. It was time to suit up. The cave was located about 12 kilometers away. An alien landscape of craters, valleys, and iron-rich rocks stretching out before us. As we approached, I felt an almost magnetic pull. It was though something deep within the alien cavern was beckoning us, compelling us to uncover its secrets. The entrance was larger than we expected, a yawning chasm in the Martian surface like a silent mouth, ready to swallow us whole. We descended slowly, using our handheld lights to guide us through the inky darkness. Suddenly, Naomi's voice crackled over the radio. Guys, do you see this? She had stopped before a vast expanse of wall, covered in intricate murals, illuminated eerily by our helmet lights. The images were indescribably ancient, yet seemed untouched by time. Their vibrant colors shockingly preserved in the sterile Martian environment. The murals depicted an array of bizarre celestial entities. Their bodies twisted and contorted into impossible shapes. In the center, a great fiery chasm was tearing reality apart, devouring stars, planets, and galaxies. At the sight of it, a bone-chilling dread gripped me, a silent scream echoing through the vastness of the cosmos. Then we heard it, whispers, not through our radios, but in our heads, an indiscernible language that slipped past our cognition like shadows in the dark. It was as if the walls of the cave themselves were speaking, their voices quiet and patient like they had all the time in the world, which, given their message, was a horrifying prospect. Naomi, ever the scientist, attempted to document the murals and the sound, but Eddie had a different reaction. He demanded that we leave, the normally grounded man now audibly shaken. But I found myself drawn to the murals, unable to turn away. The whispers grew louder, images flashing in my mind. I saw the end of everything. The universe unraveled, consumed by an insatiable maw. I saw our little blue dot, Earth, just another meal for this cosmic entity. I tried to back away, but my body was not my own. Suddenly the cave was filled with blinding light. I was forced to my knees, the whispers crescendoing into a roar. I felt like my head was splitting apart, my mind being unraveled. Just as I thought I would be torn asunder, everything stopped. The cave was quiet once more, the murals dim in our receding lights. Naomi and Eddie were looking at me, their faces pale, even in the limited light, but I couldn't hear them. All I could hear was silence. It was not a comforting silence, though. It was a silence full of implications, full of inevitable ends. We made it back to the habitation module somehow, a journey I don't remember. The whispers had stopped, but their message lingered. We reported back to command spoke of geological samples, of potential for future missions. We left out the part about the murals, about the whispers. There was no point in sowing fear when we were already facing the end. Now, as I look into the Martian night, the stars above seem different. Not a vast, unexplored frontier, but a ticking clock, an inevitable doom. The whispers are quiet, but I can still feel them etched deep into my mind. I know now that we are not alone in the universe, but our cosmic companions are not benevolent explorers or builders. No, they are the reapers, the enders, the silent whisperers in the dark. And their time is coming. The Martian wind howls again outside our module, sounding almost like whispers. I shiver despite the warmth of the module. Every gust of wind, every Martian night, every silence is now a reminder of our impending fate. 
The whispers never cease. They just grow quieter, fading into the cosmic background until they are ready to be heard again. But their message is clear. The universe has an end, and it is whispering our name.